This is video three of a series of making an InDesign study guide mobile website app for you to help with certification. All right, once you finish getting all your information in this table and having it set up, I want you to um, go ahead and draw a couple of color swatches on this side of your table, just to show that you know how to do that. So for digital publications, we're gonna draw an RGB square. So go over here and draw a rectangle and then fill it with the RGB red uh, color in the swatches that's already made in there for you. And then hold the Alt and Shift key to make a copy of it. And then change that one to the RGB blue. Alt Shift to make another copy and make it RGB green. And then we're going to put CMYK swatches down here. Those aren't pre-built in here, so we'll have to um, set those swatches up. So I'm going to hold the Alt Shift to make an extra square here, but I want to change this to cyan, the first color in CMYK. Go to Window and Open Color and choose CMYK. And then you'll get the CMYK mixer and you just put all these on zero except for cyan. And then you say Add to Swatches and it will add the color to the swatches. And you, you don't have to name it if you don't want to. I had already named some, but you can just leave it like that. Okay, and then do the Option or the Alt Shift to make another copy. And we want to make this one magenta. So you're going to click on this to change it to 100% magenta. So you go over here in this mixer, put that on zero, and this put on 100. And then you can say Add CMYK Swatch. Say OK, and then again, Alt-Shift to make a copy. And you're going to click on this color here, and you're going to make it yellow. And add CMYK swatch of that. And then K stands for black. And you're going to click on this again, and make the black 100, and the yellow 0, and say OK. All right, so now you have swatches that have the CMYK colors in them as well as the RGB. And then the other swatch I want you to learn how to make is a spot color. That's with special pre-mixed ink. So like if you're printing business cards and you have like metallic gold or something printed on your card, that's obviously not something that you can, you know, make a mix for in InDesign. So you would have to make a spot color for that to specify how that works. So the way you can choose a spot color is we're going to fill this with a spot color. Okay, so go up here to the top and choose this fill color here. And you're going to click on here and say new color swatch. And then it gives you a chance to choose, oops, right here, color type. You want to choose spot color. So process is the CMYK. Spot color is a special color. So you're going to choose spot. And then the color mode, choose one of these Pantone um, libraries here. Like let's say you're going to make me uh, metallic or something, a metallic gold. Go in there and then just choose one of those colors like that. Just to show me that you know how to find a spot color. That's really important to know when you're um, building InDesign documents for print. All right, after you get the color information page done, you can go ahead and do the same thing on the business and design page. You can just import the Word document, build a table, paste those three definitions in. Same with copyrights. Import the Word document that says copyrights, make a table, and place that in. And then page info, you're going to do something a little bit different here. You're just going to import the Word document. So let's go to place. Control D, and we'll find the um, page info document. I'm not going to replace the fonts this time. I'm just going to have it skip it, and I'm going to paste that in like that. And then to get the font to be what I want, I'm going to get my text tool and select all that text and get the eyedropper and put it on the page above that has it the way I want. Let's blow this up a little bit and we can just delete that page info and then we want this master all these things to be bold all the vocabulary words
All right, this time we're not going to put these words in a table. And the reason why is I'm going to show you that we are just going to have some of the words are going to have a diagram to explain what they are. So I'm going to make this text box small so that it ends after frame. All right, that way I only have master page, facing pages, spread, and frame. Then I'm going to click this um, overset text button, the little red plus right here. I'm going to get that and then draw a text box off to the side that has the remaining definitions on it. And I will explain why in a minute. Let's actually let's get the um, selection tool and make this smaller because I want to have some room here to draw a diagram of a page. Alright, so make your layout look something like that where you have these four definitions at the top and you have the other four definitions off to the side. So what you're going to do is you're going to draw a diagram to show where these things exist on a page. So let's get out your rectangle tool and this is going to be a diagram of the sheet of paper and we're going to draw the bleed first because that's the outside line and what I want you to do is fill that with red. This is going to demonstrate what the bleed is and then get your rectangle tool and draw a rectangle that's just a little bit inside of that red one. And this is going to be like where your page would be. So fill it with white and then I want you to put a black stroke on it and I want you to make the stroke a dotted line. So go up here at the top where it says stroke and choose like Japanese dots or dashed, whatever you want. I like the Japanese dots and I'm going to make mine five points. All right, and that's going to show you like the trim area of the page. So your page is the white area and this red area is the bleed. All right, now you're going to draw another rectangle that's going to help you understand where a gutter is, or no, page margins, I'm sorry. You're going to draw a line now that shows where page margins are. So that would go just inside of that and you can make the page margins, just leave it um, no fill and maybe make a cyan line there. So page margins, obviously like this is a margin. If you didn't have a margin you would have all your text going to the edge. So a margin is important to keep your information spaced from the edge of the paper. And then the last thing we're going to draw to demonstrate is gutter. So in order to demonstrate a gutter we have to draw a column guide. So let's say you had like two columns of text in here and let's make the column guides have like a green Let's say you had two columns of text. I'm going to do Alt Shift to make another copy of it. And let's space, whoops, let's space those out a little bit so that they're even on the page. All right, let's say that those were two um, columns of text. The space in the middle is the gutter. All right, so now you're going to draw a line. So let's get the line tool right here and just click and drag and point to the area area that this item exists. The slug is not something that you really use much, but it is on the certification test. So I'm going to go ahead and show you where it is anyway. But it's on the outside of the bleed when you have a page that's printed. Let me move this up a little bit. So when you have a page that's printed at a printing press, there is an area called the slug, and that just has the printer's information. So it's not really something we use in this class but it is something that's on the test. All right, so let's get our line tool and draw a little arrow that points to the top of the page. So right now I drew a line. You can't see it because there's, it needs to have a stroke. So you could choose black. And then let's open up the stroke panel. I have mine open over here and put an arrowhead on it. So if you go over here to start and end, you want the start of the line to have nothing. And let's put an arrowhead at the very end of it. And then you can see we have an arrow pointing there. All right, I'll do that again with page margins. I'm going to draw a line and have it showing where the margin is. And I want it to be a stroke with black. And I want it to end with an arrowhead. Same thing with bleed. We're going to point to the red area and make a black stroke. And we're going to end it with an arrowhead again. And then finally the gutter. So get your line tool, drag from the gutter, the word gutter over to the gutter, 
and cho choose black stroke and end it with an arrowhead. All right, so that is it for your study guide. Now when I zoom out here, you can see we have all the pages for the study guide for now. We might add more to it later, but that's all we're going to do on this project. And I want to show you how to export it to, to the web. I did it in one of the other videos, but once again, you can go to File. Let's save everything first. And then go File, um, Publish Online. And you, I already have this document here. If you're, it's the first time you're publishing it, you can say Publish New Document. I'm going to say update the existing document and just leave it on all, leave it on single and say publish. And yes, I want to update the existing link and it'll publish in just a minute. And it's going to give me a link to copy. And that's what you're going to give to me. Turn that into your portfolio and let me click on it. So you're going to copy that and we can view the document right now too. So you can test it out. So now when we go here, we have a little website that has all of your um, definitions and things to help you with your study guide.